Hey guys, Walter is very excited. In fact, he is so excited that so far he massacred the kitchen sink, set the living room on fire, blew up the bathroom, and then tried to signal a military helicopter to take him out of the emergency zone. While all of that is likely going to come out of my pocket, I'm actually really excited as well. And that is because Action VFX have just announced a 50% price cut that will last forever. Yes, they're cutting the prices of all of their stock footage elements in half permanently. Action VFX, in case you don't know, create super high quality action stock footage for explosions, fireballs, structural fires, dust, dirt, debris, smoke plumes, particles, ground bursts, and anything else that you could possibly need to create your own action movie. For the sake of transparency, full frontal disclaimer, I've got a really great relationship with the guys at Action VFX, and they actually ended up sending me their entire collection for free in the form of the Action VFX drive a little bit earlier in the year. But to be honest, if I was looking for stock footage elements for my own film projects or visual effects, I'd probably go with Action VFX. I likely just wouldn't buy every single element. With their prices literally cut in half, you can now pick up individual elements for as cheap as 5 bucks, going up to around about $20 for the high resolution 4 5K versions. And you can pick up entire collections for less than $100. I think the cheapest one probably start around the $65, going up to a couple of hundreds, depending on the collection and the resolution that you choose. On top of that, you can also apply my custom coupon code, Surface Studio, in one word, and you'll get an additional 10% off. That will also help to support me, which I always really appreciate. And even if you're not looking to spend a cent, go and check out their website and grab yourself all of the free stuff they got on there. They've got elements for dust waves, smoke plumes, burn marks, blood mists, bullet hits, a really cool looking 2K fireball element, and then sound effects for bullet hits and explosions. And all of that is free for you to download and just use. No wonder Walter got so excited, though I'm probably gonna be spending his bail money on fixing up all the stuff he broke. Anyway, go and check out the Action VFX website and do remember to use my coupon code Surface Studio if you do want to buy anything and share the news around. It's a pretty huge change and hopefully it will make all of the elements much more accessible to all of you and everyone who wants to get into filmmaking and start creating their own action movies. Finally, to make this video a little bit more useful to you, let me give you three quick tips for compositing the elements into your videos. Tip number one is match your blur. Here we have the living room scene and everything is already pretty nicely on fire. And when you're compositing some of these elements, like these big fire elements into your footage, you want to make sure that they match the blurriness or the sharpness of your footage, as well as the depth of field of your camera. For example, this element over here on the right hand side is a little bit closer to the camera and it's probably not fully in focus. So I actually applied a fast box blur effect to it to kind of just blur it out just by a little bit so it's not fully crisp and not fully sharp and just sits a little bit more organically in the shot. As an example, let's grab one of the structure fire elements from the Action VFX collection. Maybe I'll just go with this white window front fire here drop that into the composition. Let me just place it down here in the bottom left hand side. I'll make it just a little bit bigger as well. Let me just offset that a little bit. And because I want this element to feel like it's a lot closer to the camera, I don't want it to be fully sharp. I don't want it to be fully in focus. All of these elements obviously are really nice and crisp out of the box. So let's apply a blur effect to this element. And I really like using the fast box blur just because it is GPU accelerated. And then just, just jack up the blur radius. I don't want to go overboard. I just want to add a little bit, maybe like three, just to give it a little bit of blurriness. And it just adds a whole lot of depth to the scene because it makes it feel like this fire is just a whole lot closer to the camera. Tip number two is to add some lens dirt. Most of the time when you're using the elements from Action VFX, which are all fire, explosion, dust and dirt and, you know, grimy and gritty effects, it works really well if you're adding a little bit of dirt, a little bit of dust onto the lens itself. So it really feels like the viewer is right there, right in the middle of, you know, all this stuff going on. On the Action VFX website, you'll be able to download a whole bunch of lens dirt textures and they're all free. You can just bring them into your project. I already have them here in my lens dirt folder. And then we can just grab any one of these, drop it into our composition. Let me just scale this down because again, it's quite a big texture. Don't want it to be too small. Let's go and move it over to the right hand side just a little bit. And then you can simply change the blend mode over to screen. And because the colors don't quite match, you may want to apply a simple tint effect and then simply change the map white to property to you now just that bright area of your fire. 
And now if we rewind and play this back, that actually looks quite nice. Now you may want to add some flicker to this lens dirt as well and maybe not make it quite so opaque, but I actually like to use these elements slightly differently. Let me delete the tint effect and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this lens dirt layer as a track mat on a duplicated version of my fire so that all of these nice dirt highlight spots on the lens interact with the fire a lot more naturally. For that I'm simply going to duplicate my fire comp. By the way this is really just the layer that contains all of my fire elements grouped together. Make sure that this sits directly underneath your lens dirt layer and change the track mat over to luma mat. So we're kind of cutting out these lens dirt elements from this fire layer. And because it looks a little bit odd right now, again, I want to apply a fast box blur effect to that layer. And let's just jack this up. And again, can you see how we're kind of re-revealing these really nice lens dirt elements? And obviously we can kind of scale this layer up and reposition it in any way that we want. I kind of want to offset it just a little bit so it doesn't, you know, match exactly over the base fire footage. So now we've got these really nice kind of flickering lens dirt elements. And then let's change the blend mode of this layer from normal over, you can either use screen, I like to go add, just adds a little bit more intensity. And obviously let's unsolo this layer so we can actually see what this looks like. Now I've got these lens dirt elements right here. But if I play this back now, you can see that these lens dirt elements interact and react to the fire in the scene much more naturally. Finally, tip number three is to add some motion blur to your elements. Because most of the elements from Action VFX are shot at high speed to give you slow motion, they're using a pretty high shutter speed, which then means that every single frame of your footage is usually nice and sharp and there isn't much motion blur. That aspect, however, can make these elements stand out a little bit when you're compositing them into, you know, standard video footage. So I always recommend adding some motion blur back onto all of these elements to make them sit a little bit more naturally in the scene. For that, if you have After Effects CC and above, you can use the CC Force Motion Blur effect, or if you want to, the Pixel Motion Blur. Do this at the very end. These effects are pretty slow to calculate. And if I use the CC Force Motion Blur and apply that to my fire layer, you may want to jack up your motion blur samples because this determines the quality of the motion blur. But now you can see my computer is rendering quite a bit for every single frame to really calculate that motion blur. So you really want to do that at the end of the process. I'm going to delete this motion blur effect again because I actually prefer to use some of the third party plugins. There's a real smart motion blur plugin which works really well and it's really nice and fast. And the one that I personally like a lot right now is the BCC motion blur which is Boris Continuum Complete. So let's just apply that to this fire comp layer. And this one calculates a whole lot faster. It looks a lot more organic, a lot smoother. I can't just like the way it looks. Let me reduce the blur amount maybe to uh, go with 0.7 and let's rewind and play this back. And just adding that little bit of motion blur back in really makes these elements sit so much nicer in this shot. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, maybe get access to my private Discord server, be sure to check out my Patreon page. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.